Whether we gain weight or lose it ultimately depends on the balance between the calories we take in through food and the calories we burn in metabolism and exercise. When we want to lose weight, we try to eat less and exercise more. But what about when we need to gain weight? We don't really want to cut back on exercise since it helps build muscle. Another option is to help the body use energy more efficiently at rest. If we can decrease our metabolism, we can tell our bodies to hold on to more of the calories we consume every day. When we're scared or worried, our hearts start to beat faster and we may feel hot and begin to perspire. Stress significantly increases our metabolism, and we can actually feel it. The hormone adrenaline raises the metabolic rate of multiple organs, including the heart, liver, and skeletal muscle. This revving up of body processes, or fight or flight response, could potentially help a person escape danger, but in our modern world, it's often energy wasted. Relaxing can help lower your metabolism and may also improve your appetite. Sleep deprivation can increase your metabolism. When subjects slept only 5 hours a night for 5 days, their total daily energy expenditure was 5% higher than that of the subjects who slept 9 hours each night, and this increase translated into a difference of 100 calories every day. Aim for 7 to 9 hours of sleep per day. Carbohydrates can be divided into complex and simple. The complex carbohydrates are starches and fibers and the simple carbohydrates are sugars. Complex carbohydrates have a more complex chemistry and so take longer to digest and absorb. As a result, the body oxidizes these carbohydrates more slowly. We can see here that the total carbohydrate oxidation is lower for 6 hours after the consumption of complex carbohydrates compared to sugars. This effect is also seen with some types of fiber such as resistant starch. When subjects ate meals containing 5 grams of resistant starch, their carbohydrate oxidation over a 6-hour period was cut in half. Pair complex carbohydrates with vinegar to reduce lipolysis, fat oxidation. The subjects eating complex carbohydrates had a lower carbohydrate oxidation but a higher fat oxidation. Vinegar is composed primarily of water and acetic acid, which has been shown to decrease lipolysis. Insulin is actually one of the hormones that increase the metabolic rate. In the popular media, insulin is often reputed to promote fat storage. It is true that insulin suppresses fat oxidation and stimulates fat formation when it's produced following a meal. However, insulin also stimulates a portion of our metabolism, carbohydrate oxidation, Furthermore, insulin increases levels of hormones that augment metabolism, POMC and CART, and suppresses those that decrease metabolism, NPY and AGRP. Insulin has also been shown to contribute to the thermic effect of food, the increase in metabolism following a meal, by increasing sympathetic activity. In fact, Max Rubner suggested that insulin played a role in this as early as 1902. Insulin also stimulates the sodium-potassium pump, a major contributor to the BMR. Choosing high-fiber foods can help bring down insulin levels. A high-fiber intake is correlated with lower insulin levels and has even been shown to reduce insulin needs of people with type 2 diabetes. When we eat, our food goes through us relatively quickly, and we feel hungry every few hours. But cold-blooded animals like turtles use their food up much more slowly. Scientists have fed rate of passage markers, or PMs, like seeds to Galapagos tortoises and found that it takes an average of 12 days for the first seed to pass through the digestive system. This slow digestion corresponds to their slow metabolism. As we saw in the carbohydrate studies above, the rate the body burns the carbohydrate in food is determined by the rate at which glucose enters the bloodstream. When we get stressed, our glucose and insulin levels rise to stimulate fuel oxidation. Animals with very high metabolic rates like birds have very high glucose levels while animals with low metabolic rates like reptiles and amphibians have much lower glucose levels.
so warm-blooded animals use up the calories in their food very quickly and cold-blooded animals take a long time to burn their calories. Slowing digestion could help the body retain the calories in food longer. One force that affects how quickly the body digests food is gravity. You don't have to go to the moon to reduce the amount of gravity pulling on your body. You can change the effect of gravity right here on Earth. During liftoff, astronauts deal with increased gravity simply by assuming a reclined position. Studies show that just lying in bed on your back slows the emptying of the stomach. This position reduces the effects of gravity on the body since the feet are at heart level. You can prop up your feet to increase the anti-gravity effect. Iodine in the diet is used by the body to produce thyroxine, but larger amounts of iodine can suppress both the production and the secretion of thyroid hormone. Iodine has been used to treat Graves' disease since the 1890s. In fact, it was the only agent available until the development of antithyroid drugs in the 1940s. Iodine can do something that antithyroid drugs cannot, it produces the release of hormone already formed in the gland. As a result, iodine can lower thyroxine levels much faster than drugs. Iodine can also bring down the metabolic rate quickly. It has been shown to produce a decrease in the metabolic rate comparable to that seen after subtotal thyroidectomy. Researchers have also studied the effects of iodine in euthyroid rats and found that the organification of iodide, the first step in hormone production, is, in their words, almost completely blocked within hours. The antithyroid effect of iodine even helps account for its use during nuclear emergencies, with part of the protective effect of potassium iodide lying in its ability to suppress the organification of iodide in the thyroid. If you have Graves' disease, Consider supplementing with iodine, two drops of glucose iodine or one drop of a saturated solution of iodine two times per day. Researchers are still investigating what makes an animal warm or cold-blooded. One difference lies in the types of fats making up the cellular membrane. The membranes of cold-blooded animals contain more of a polyunsaturated fatty acid known as linoleic acid. Linoleic acid is also more abundant in the membranes of large mammals, which have a lower cellular metabolic rate and a lower heart rate. The composition of the cellular membranes may affect the activity of the sodium-potassium pump as well as the degree of proton leak by determining how leaky the membrane is to ions. A deficiency in linoleic acid has been shown to stimulate the activity of the sodium-potassium pump. Lack of this is essential fatty acid has also been shown to increase proton leak. Including linoleic acid in the diet may help the body utilize energy more efficiently. You can find it in some vegetable oils like sunflower and soybean oil and foods like nuts and seeds. Scientists have just begun unraveling the secrets of hibernation, but they have identified some hormones that may be involved. Hibernators tend to have higher levels of serotonin and melatonin, which may help the body conserve energy. Serotonin has been shown to reduce thermogenesis and energy wasting during hibernation, and melatonin may also enhance energy efficiency by lowering the cost of producing ATP. Serotonin and melatonin are actually found naturally in the food we eat. Foods particularly rich in serotonin include bananas, pineapple, red plums, avocado, walnuts, tomatoes, and eggplant. You can find melatonin in sunflower seeds, tart cherries, walnuts, oats, sweet corn, rice, ginger, tomatoes, bananas, and barley. The nutrient may reduce the effects of stress on the body. Magnesium can actually lower levels of noradrenaline and adrenaline during stress. Magnesium has been reported in many studies to inhibit lipolysis by inactivating hormone-sensitive lipase, the main regulator of lipolysis. This enzyme is activated during starvation, when the body consumes its fat reserves. Magnesium has also been shown to reduce proton leak, a wasteful process that raises the energy cost of ATP production by causing the body to produce heat instead of ATP. So be sure to choose magnesium-rich foods like almonds, sesame or sunflower seeds, black or kidney beans, spinach, whole wheat bread, brown rice, 
salmon and halibut. That's just right for getting your daily 1,000 mg of calcium. On the periodic table, calcium is right next to magnesium in the same chemical group, or column. Like magnesium, calcium helps the body relax and reduces the activity of the sympathetic nervous system. Calcium plays many important roles in metabolism. Calcium in the pineal gland helps the body produce serotonin and melatonin. Calcium in the hypothalamus helps set the body's thermostat. The presence of ionic calcium actually reduces body temperature. Researchers learned long ago that both calcium and magnesium suppress lipolysis. This effect of calcium has been reproduced in many studies and may be achieved by lowering levels of hormone-sensitive lipase. Intracellular calcium also stimulates the production of nitric acid, a chemical messenger that reduces the metabolic rate. Plus, Intracellular calcium may reduce proton leak, boosting the efficiency of the body's energy factories. Calcium may increase protomotive force, phosphorylation potential, and redox potential, all effects that are the opposite of those of uncouplers, which induce proton leak. Increases in intracellular calcium, as produced by exercise, are associated with decreased proton leak. Milk is also a particularly rich source of tryptophan, used by the body to make serotonin and melatonin. The tryptophan to total protein ratio of milk is double that of other protein sources. Three glasses of milk per day would supply half a gram of tryptophan every day, almost as much as two servings of chicken. A lack of tryptophan in the diet of rats increases their food needs. Rats fed a tryptophan deficient diet eat more food but weigh the same as rats consuming a more tryptophan rich diet. 